Welcome to the Rusted Garden. In today's do-it-yourself episode, I'm going to show you how to use essential oils in your garden. I like using peppermint oil, rosemary oil. They both are sold on my seed shop. How do they work? Before we even get to the recipe and how I use them, how do they work? When you go out in your garden and you, you know, trim off a leaf of the tomato plant, break something off the cucumber plant, um, pick your kale to eat it, your plant sends out a scent, a pheromone. Now, we can smell, especially when you break a cucumber plant or you're you know, playing with tomato leaves, you can smell that tomato scent. When you damage the plant for whatever reason, it releases a pheromone, an odor. The bad insects smell that. They're attracted to it. They come to your plants. That's how they know your plants are there. They don't really see them. They smell them. So using rosemary oil, using peppermint oil, really masks the scent of your garden, especially when the plants are damaged. And it doesn't really confuse the plant, uh, the insects. They just don't know that that plant is there because they can't smell it through the peppermint oil or through the rosemary oil. It also works with spider mites. I've been using peppermint oil to really manage spider mites. Spider mites are hard to kill with any kind of insecticide. And when you actually try and treat them with chemicals, good or bad, organic or not organic, it also kills out a lot of other insects that you want that would actually eat the spider mites. I found that the peppermint oil sprayed on the undersides of leaves of beans and cucumbers really deters the spider mites and rosemary oil will also help. I have a whole list here of what you can use them on. So that's how the essential oils work. These essentially work as repellents and they mask the scents or the pheromones of your plants. Now, when do you use it? I have a card that I send in the oils that I sell and it says use every 7 to 14 days. I really found using it close to once a week was best to keep insects away from your garden. But if you're on a stretch of no rain, you don't really have lots of problems with insects and you can go to, you know, maybe the 14 day time span. But you want to use these oils every 7 days up to 14 days. Now, I spent a lot of time compiling a list of what essential oils are effective against insect-wise. And you can find, I mean, there's probably 15 different essential oils. I'm only picking three, actually. Rosemary oil, peppermint oil, and I'll be doing a video on orange oil. Um, but I'm testing that out a little bit more, but you'll see it in here. So here's the list. You can just freeze it. It'll show you what it works on. This will also get to my blog eventually. But I pick peppermint oil, rosemary oil, and orange oil. Those are my main repellents, my main essential oils. And I also have neem oil that I use to kill off chewing insects. And those are really what I'm using in my garden. The benefit of rosemary oil, it really attracts bees too. So why it repels a lot of these, rosemary oil will also help bring bees to your garden. Now, we're going to get to the recipe in a second, and I know this is a little bit long before we get there, but this is a great article, Essential Oils as Green Pesticides, Potential, um, Potentials and Constraints. This is really good research. It'll tell you what the essential oils do, um, and it's really, really interesting if you like that kind of stuff. It even shows you the chemical makeup of the different components that are found in the oils, which is really cool. And then you can just read through it, but it really gives you a good sense of how these oils work and why they work. And it will differentiate for you the oils that are more repellents and you also have chemicals that kill off in insects. All right, so to make the spray, when I showed you how to make the neem oil, we, we were using like a tablespoon. You don't need all of that. These are steam distilled oils. They're extremely concentrated. This is a two ounce bottle. And to make it, I use one drop of peppermint oil or rosemary oil. You could combine them if you want. One drop per two ounces. This is a 16 ounce bottle. So I'm going to put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> so one drop per two ounces. Just enough soap. We're not using this as a soap insecticide, although you can find that in my previous video. Just enough soap in there that when you shake this up, the oil gets dispersed. You are just putting this on 
to mask the scent of your garden really. Shake it up, it'll disperse through. Every time you go to a new plant, give it a shake. I like using this nozzle, which I also sell in my seed shop, because if you turn this upside down, it still sprays. So it's real easy to get under the leaves and do all that. Those are my peppermint plants. I'm sorry, those are my pepper plants. Now they're sprayed with peppermint oil. Shake it up, spray it on there. Always test spray, even though this is a low amount of oil, I just recommend you get into the practice of test spraying leaves, waiting 48 hours, and see what happens. It smells wonderful. That's a peppermint spray. Every seven days or so in your garden, top of the leaves, bottom of the leaves, especially if you want to control spider mites on your cucumbers and on your bean plants, spray under the leaves. Now, this is for a small dose, small batch, one ounce per, or one drop per two ounces of water. If you want to use something bigger and you wanted to make a bigger mix, that's one gallon of water. And you're going to use a half a teaspoon, let's see if I can find it, to one teaspoon of the oil in there. I also sell this on my seed shop. My seed shop is the sponsor for today's video. So just put this in half a teaspoon to one teaspoon, right into a gallon. Once you mix this, if you want to use the bigger gallon, this is going to be able to stay in here for at least a week, if not two weeks. It's just plain oil, essential oil. And then you're going to put in enough soap, more in a gallon, to disperse that through. Again, you're not making a soapy water spray, so you don't have to overdo it. And you would just shake this up. If you want to make it this way and hold it, that was a little bit too much soap, I can tell by the amount of bubbles. But if you want to just make a gallon's worth and then you can just fill up your smaller containers, I do recommend a container like this. This is a half a gallon. And when you pump this up and push this down and then lock it, it will continually spray. So you can move this all around. It's just a nice little hand pump spray. That's a half of a gallon. Okay, that's the basics for setting up the peppermint oil. You would use the rosemary oil the same exact way. And again, it's your choice of what you want to use in your garden. I have experience using the peppermint oil for the aphids, for the cabbage looper, moth and larva, I use neem oil. But rosemary has seemed to help keep the moth away. They just don't seem as interested in the plants. And I've also had some success with peppermint oil on the white flies. And let's see, we had the aphids and the spider mites. Now, each of your gardens are going to be different. You're going to have different pests in there. So if you all have experience using these oils, please leave a comment and let other gardeners know what these oils seem to work on. And if you are using something else besides peppermint oil or rosemary oil, let us know. Again, essential oils really act as a repellent, keep the insects away. And if you're spraying an area that may have spider mites or white flies, they just don't like the smell. It really irritates them. And there's a lot of different chemicals inside each oil that affect your insects. And again, you could check out this article. I found it online, so it's easy to find. And it's the Biopesticides International. It's a really, really interesting read. Hope this gives you an idea of how you can use peppermint oil and rosemary oil in your garden. The recipes are real simple. One bottle goes a long, long way. Um, you can store it for up to two weeks. Spray this every seven days or so in your garden. If you get the infestation, do it more regularly every seven days. If you don't really have that much trouble but you want to keep them away, you can go to every 10 or 14 days. Hope this helps. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com and this is an easy way to use a very green method to keep those pests and damaging insects out of your garden. You can go and eat this really. You have a little bit of soap, rinse it off, but come on, it's just essential oils and a little bit of soap. Much, much better for you and for your garden. Thanks for watching.